Hello everyone, welcome back to KXAN Live. I'm Esmeralda Zamora, happy Tuesday. Today I'm here with our reporter, Eric Henriksen, our space reporter. Eric, how are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous, it's a beautiful day. It's, uh, have you seen how pretty it is outside? The weather's kind of finally gained to acceptable levels. I consider this acceptable when we're in the 90s as opposed to the hundreds. That's, I, I've lived in Texas too long, that's gonna be acceptable. <laughs> But I, I consider it holiday season. It's not, we were talking about this right before we started. It's not holiday season. It is fall, but it's not holiday season. I don't think holiday season starts at the bare minimum until Thanksgiving. I love Halloween. I don't consider it a holiday. I consider it a great day for festivities and parties. My wedding anniversary is at that time of year. So it's a great time to like, that's a celebration time for me, not a holiday. People need to stop moving things around on me. Okay, calendars are calendars. Season. This spooky is me. Season. I'm telling you, calendars are calendars. It is spooky season though. I'll accept spooky season. And with spooky season, we like to talk about space. So right. today we have a space topic, right? We do. There's an eclipse. Eclipse. There's another eclipse. You thought you were done with eclipses, but it turns out they come back every year in some way, shape, or form. We have one more left this year. We've had, so far, we had two t annual eclipses. This is one of them. We had a total eclipse in April, and then we had a lunar eclipse. So we've had four total this year alone. Uh, the sun ones, the other ones, we're talking about solar eclipses specifically mm -hmm. today because the lunar ones are... They're a little more common. Solar eclipses are three big ones with two annular with this one coming up tomorrow. Is October 2nd. October 2nd, an eclipse. I didn't even know about this till today because it's in a weird part of the world. Uh, but it does touch the United States just, just a tiny, tiny bit. And so we'll talk about that. And what part of the United States? Hawaii. Hawaii is going to get this eclipse. So I know unless you're traveling to Hawaii in the next 48 hours, it's going to happen pretty early in the day in Hawaii. You're going to miss it. Or you could be traveling to South America where they're also going to get a little piece of this eclipse. So the eclipse path goes from... I'm going to have to do this math in my head real quick. It goes <laughs> northwest of Hawaii down to the southeast to the southern tip of South America. That's where it stops. That's a picture of this type of eclipse. It's a ring of fire annular eclipse. There are two types of eclipses for people who don't remember all of our eclipse lessons at the beginning of the year. I remember we all did all this, but I'm going to quick refresher on everybody. Two types of eclipses. A third type if you count partial eclipses, which are eclipses that are not fully it's when the moon doesn't fully cover the sun and you just get kind of like an edge of it and it's not as impressive things just get a little dark and everybody goes oh look there's a partial eclipse two real eclipses though there's a total eclipse like we had in april on april 8th that's when the moon is the just the perfect distance from the sun and just the perfect distance from the earth where it blocks out the sun entirely you get all that nighttime i was in fredericksburg during that and it was cloudy unfortunately so i only saw like 15 seconds total of this four and a half minute eclipse that I was promised by the weather gods. But a lot of Central Texas got to see this eclipse for a much longer stretch of time. Super cool. The world got quiet, if you remember. I know some people like cheered. The area I was in, everyone got silent and they were in awe and there were people crying. It was really cool. And I mean, not the crying, but the emotionality <laughs> of it. Everyone just kind of reacting to it. So that's a total eclipse. The other is a partial eclipse, uh, or sorry, a partial, an annular eclipse. So this annular eclipse occurs when the moon is further away from the Earth, closer to the Sun in its orbit. And what this means is the Moon doesn't fully block out the Sun. And so we get this ring of fire effect where the Sun's peeking out along the edges of the Moon, not fully blocking it out. So the big difference between these two is kind of the amount of light you receive. Under a total solar eclipse, you receive no light from the Sun. Under, on the annular eclipse, you receive a little bit of the sun's light coming down. So you still have to wear your eclipse glasses. That's why we're showing you eclipse glass footage. Mm -hmm. If you do see an annular eclipse, you have to wear your eclipse glasses because you are seeing actual sun, piece of the sun, not just sunlight peeking out. It's parts of the sun that are not fully covered and it will burn your eyeballs. So that's important to note if you do get to go to Hawaii in the next 48 hours. And as far as this eclipse, if we are happen to be in Hawaii, how long is it going to last? What can we expect to see that ring of fire? This one's total super ring? cool because it's a very long eclipse. This ring of fire is going to last 7 minutes and 25 seconds. Compare that to the eclipse back in April, which was a total mm -hmm. eclipse. Again, that was four and a half minutes on the longest point. Pretty much uh, Fredericksburg was one of those spots. I think it kind of passed through Marble Falls is another spot that got a good long time. Uh, that you have like this four and a half minute long eclipse, but this one's seven and a half minutes, which is it's a pretty chunky eclipse. This is considered a long eclipse, 
because of that, that long stretch of time. Now, it's going to pass by some cool areas. So it starts, like I said, it's kind of over the Pacific mainly. It's going to pass over Hawaii. Now, that one's not going to get the full effect. It's only 40 to 50% coverage. Mm -hmm. So they're getting really a partial eclipse. So I know I'm building it up, but it's partial eclipse. The other place is Easter Island. Now, Easter Island's that spot where it has the giant stone heads. Yeah. And they're getting, they're kind of in the right perfect spot. So really cool. I was actually reading some guides online of how you can position yourself in the right spot next to one of the stone heads and see the eclipse at the same time. Now, I'm, I'm guessing, because of my experience with all the eclipse hunters that we talked to over the last year, a lot of those people have already bought flights to this area and are on their way there now, or if they're not there already, already setting up now a whole day in advance. It's going to happen pretty early in the morning uh, when it does occur in that part of the ocean. Or right where it's going to happen around one forty-five ish our time, and so carry that over a few time zones. It's early early morning. It's where it's going to pass over. And the last total eclipse here in the U.S. lasted four minutes, about five minutes, right? Yeah, it was like four and a half minutes. Yeah, four and a half minutes. So this one's going to be super long. And when can we expect to see the next solar eclipse here? All right, so disappointed for you, right? <laughs> I have notes because it's so far away. So the next annular eclipse, that's the one with these ring of fires. That's not until February 17th, 2026. And the only place you can see that is Antarctica. What? So if you want to book a flight to Antarctica, and you can do that. I think it's actually more of a cruise. But uh, there is a couple flights that go in and out. Uh, 2026. The next total eclipse is August 12th, 2026. Uh, that one's crossing over Greenland, Iceland, Spain, parts of Russia, and Portugal. So if you want to get your flight now to that one, that's August 12, 2026. And we're not going to see one in the United States until I think it's 2046. What? And that passes over Montana. Nor I'm doing this from memory. Montana, <laughs> North Dakota, and South Dakota. It's just kind of like a little edge of the country, and it kind of moves over more Canada. So you probably get a better view of Canada. You can get a better view in Canada if you want to plan 20 years in advance. I can barely book a vacation a, w a month in advance, <laughs> let, alone, let alone a year in advance, let alone 20 years 20 in advance. Years. So, I mean, if you're willing to do that, that's when it's happening. So, tw uh, 2046 is when that's happening, 22 years in advance. Uh, but the next one you can really see is 2026 in that, again, it's Iceland, Greenland, Spain, a little bit of Russia, and Portugal. And if you missed any of the eclipses we had this year, you missed them for, what, 20 years? Uh, to for over Texas, it's several like hundreds, maybe a thousand years. I think it's like fourteen hundred years, if I remember. Wow. It's like twenty, no, maybe like twenty three, twenty. I have the number twenty three forty six <laughs> in my head right now. But that may be a different eclipse. That may be the next eclipse over Hawaii. Yeah, that may be that one. So I mean, it is like a thousand years from now, several thousand years from now. So you're not going to get the, the the same effect. I mean, you could stick around if you you could try. Mm -hmm. No telling. I mean, they have cryogenic <laughs> freezing they're working on. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work in the next hundred years, but. Whatever you can find out, we'll see. We can, it, you know, if you're gonna, if you want to stick around for an eclipse over Texas, over Austin area specifically, you're gonna, you're gonna be waiting a while. But if you want to travel, that's my recommendation. If you really want to see an eclipse, 2026, fly to Spain. If you, you can guess, that I have thought about this. I, Iceland's also the one I've been thinking about. I'm not sure about the clear skies there as much. Uh, you never know, so book the trip never and know. find I, out. <laughs> we were told that where I was at in Fredericksburg would be a great spot. And uh, we did get a little bit, but it wasn't it wasn't Complete much. We darkness. got the long stretch of darkness, but not all the oohs and ahs everybody else did. Y'all are lucky, but uh, <laughs> yeah, tis life. And as far as those glasses that we're seeing right now on the screen, how right. can someone know if their glasses are still working or if they need to get new ones? Right. Let's see. I have the number here. It's ISO like three two eight two. It's in our web. Sorry, three two eight two dash two or something like that. I used to have this memorized. <laughs> uh, but uh, is they'll say ISO on it. That's the things you really need to look for. It's gonna be recommended by the American. Uh, optometry group and the American Astronomical Society will be marked by this. The ones you bought back earlier in the year for April, those will last as long as they're not damaged. In fact, I was reading an article earlier today that the ones, they should last forever as long as they're undamaged. Mm -hmm. But the problem is they just get damaged. I mean, they're pieces of paper with a little yeah, piece of plastic. So you can buy them. Yeah, and they're so cheap. You can buy them. I think I bought like 200 of them to hand out myself, and it was maybe... 50 bucks, wow. something like that. It wasn't very much to buy them. And you can check them, though. They'll be marked by the ISO and the American Astronomical Society. And so those, those ISO is always the initials I recommend looking for because that's, that's the certification that they're the right filter. The easiest way to double check is if you hold them up to a, like a light and you can see through them at all, then, then they don't work. <laughs> you, the only light that should be able to get through them, I know it's weird to say, the only light that should be able to get through them is the sun. So if the sun can get through them, 
great. And any other light can get through them, not great. So there you go. Wow. Well, if you guys have any questions as far as this Ring of Fire eclipse, we have an article that Eric wrote up on our website, kxcn.com. He goes into detail on this specific eclipse, annual eclipses versus total eclipses, and then how to view it, the partial eclipse, the Ring of Fire. I'm sure that's what it looks like, right? Yes. That's the Ring of Fire. And then kind of more details as to our, how long our last eclipse was, how long this one will be. So if you plan on seeing this eclipse, you better book your flight to Hawaii because that's <laughs> Probably today. the only place. You need to book it today or get to Easter <laughs> Island. I don't even know if there's flights to Easter Island. I don't know how to get to Easter <laughs> Island. It's one of those mythical places. I think pass over the Galapagos too. And they get, a, they get a little bit of it. They need to find like a boat percentage. and get there somehow. <laughs> there was one place I saw I got 1% of the eclipse. And I'm wow. like, why would you travel to that place <laughs> to get 1% of the eclipse? Either get all of it or none of it. And 1% is just, I would not spend thousands of dollars for 1%. But, you know, people be people. They, they travel. They go see things where they got to see them. So. It's about the experience. It's about the experience. That's exactly right. I had a great experience during the last eclipse, and I hope I have a great experience in 2026 when I'm in Iceland. Yeah. We had a year full of eclipses, and we will no longer be seeing eclipses here yeah. in America. Sorry, it's the last one for a while. This is probably our last <laughs> eclipse. We have a lunar eclipse next year and a couple partials, but... Nothing, nothing to be excited about as much. Nothing too crazy. Not the partials. Those are kind of boring. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Eric. Is there anything else you want to share before we head out? That's all. Get ready for to see more clip stuff tomorrow. Not from us, but probably from Hawaii. They'll probably have some stuff you can probably check out online. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And that's all we have today. Remember, you can go back to our website, kxan.com, to find more details on that Ring of Fire eclipse happening in Hawaii tomorrow. So thank you so much for joining us. Again, I'm Esmeralda Zamora, and this is KXN Live.